Well, regular viewer Andrew asked me to explain about charging his soon-to-arrive Peugeot 3008 as he lives in a caravan park, power is restricted. As it happens, we just received a new portable charger made by EV Dance to review, so we can tackle both at the same time. So join me as I tackle the adventure of charging my electric vehicle using the EV Dance portable charger with a three-pin plug in a head-to-head -head with my Tesla portable charger with a three-pin plug. Well, let's get the easy technical bits out of the way first. Every EV has one or more electric motors and each has a power rating. Now with a petrol engine, that's usually measured in horsepower. For EVs, it's measured in kilowatts. So Andrew's 3008 has a single motor. It's rated at 157 kilowatts. That's about 210 horsepower. Well, this is just simply the power of the motor. It's got nothing whatsoever to do with the battery size, maximum charging speed, anything. Just like the horsepower of a petrol engine has nothing whatsoever to do with the size of the fuel tank. Well, the 3008 battery has a battery pack with a size of 73 kilowatt hours. In a simple term, if you drove the 3008 using the full power of the motor, all 157 kilowatts, you could drive for about half an hour before the battery would be flat. And to recharge it, you could plug it into any public EV charger and the maximum it would ever take would be 160 kilowatts. Think electric kettle that will only ever take the rated power. It's usually found on a label. So although your house circuit, uh, electricity circuit can supply about 23,000 watts, 23 kilowatts. The kettle in this case only ever takes three kilowatts. You cannot damage your EV by plugging it into a really powerful charger. It will always sort out what it needs. Okay, so we've got the basics. So now we need to look at charging. And Andrew mentions several charger powers. Seven kilowatt, 22, 350. These are all EV chargers. They just provide power at different rates. And some of them will be AC, some will be DC. Well, if you're on a road trip, you'd probably choose a faster charger so you don't have to hang around. And if you're plugging in overnight, a slower one will do absolutely fine. So most people will use what suits you at that time. Well, as a general rule, the cheapest is also the slowest and is often only available overnight at off-peak rates. In his case, he says he gets off-peak rates of 19p overnight, so this is likely to be the cheapest and certainly the most convenient option. Plug it in every night if you need to and unplug it in the morning when the cheap rate ends. Or leave it running during the day and pay the 26 pence. That's still a relatively cheap rate. For convenience, you cannot beat home charging. Every morning you can wake up and the car has a full battery. Really simple. But there really is no need to plug it in every day. You can leave a car plugged in permanently, does it absolutely no harm. It will not charge if it doesn't need to charge. Uh, but if you're not using your car, you can may as well just leave it plugged in. If you do use your car, there's no need to charge every time you get back home. For Andrew, where he's talking about charging once a month, um, that might be enough for him if he's doing very low mileage just once a week or once a month just to plug it in overnight. Well, public EV chargers are everywhere, but they'll normally be much dearer than home charging. In his case, he quotes Ionity, and they charge 74p per kilowatt hour against his 19p. That's about four times as much. So here we're going to have a look at his three pin plug portable EV chargers that just plug into any suitable socket. That could be an outdoor weatherproof socket, which I think he says he has, or an undercover one in a garage or put the cable in through a window. Now my Tesla Model S came with a portable three pin plug charger from Tesla. And indeed I used this while waiting for my larger and faster home charger to be installed. Andrew states he only plans to charge once a month. So for him, this will be ideal. My Tesla charger consists of three parts, the first of which is the three pin plug, which has a short cable on it and an adapter. The second part is the charger itself. And the third part is the cable that goes from the charger to the car and plugs into the charging socket. 
in simple terms, you just plug the three pin plug into any suitable socket. In my case here, I'm using both an external weatherproof socket and pushing the cable through a window and plug it into the kitchen. Yeah, you can just plug in your EV to any kitchen socket. The Tesla portable charger is typically minimalist, basic in the extreme. No screen, no controls. Everything is controlled by the EV display or the app. You can plug it into a standard electric socket. Now, the three pin plug has a 13 amp fuse in it. So the maximum you can get out of this charger or any charger in the UK is three kilowatts. The EV Dance Portable 3 pin charger has a variable power setting from 6 amps, 8 amps, 10 amps up to 13 amps. If your power is restricted, like with Andrew, you can set a lower rate. It is specifically made for the UK market and meets all the safety regulations. It also has three parts, the 3 pin plug, the charger and the EV plug. Now, viewers will often ask me why the channel is called Dave Takes It On. And the answer is really simple. There are so many myths, rumours, false facts and downright dangerous so-called expert opinion or information that I always prefer to do it for myself and actually see what happens. And when we make a video about home charging, we usually get a flood of these myths and lies. So let me here just set the scene what we're doing uh, with this test. I've got two suitable sockets I can use. One's an external weatherproof socket at the side of the house. Has been tested recently. It's all certified and it's safe. The other is my kitchen. I push the cable through the window. Obviously, it's not practical overnight to leave the kitchen window open. But the reason I use the kitchen socket is because it's the newest electrical circuit in the house. We had a new kitchen fitted recently and the entire electrics for the kitchen were replaced. The circuit is connected to a 32 amp breaker or RCD and was very recently retested and certified by a qualified electrician. So this circuit is my prime one for running tests. If I chose any old circuit, I would never know whether any anomalous readings or results were the charger or the circuit. So for this test, I'll use both the kitchen and the outdoor sockets. Now, I've used the Tesla portable charger many times, found it's always very consistent. By default, it always selects 10 amps and so provides about 2.4 kilowatts of power. That, that might not mean much to you, so I prefer to measure the charging speed in miles per hour. So in my case, I get five miles added to my range for every hour that is plugged in. Five miles an hour. I can override it. I can select 13 amps or 8 amps on the app or on the car display. Uh, it says it's capable of going up to 32 amps. But I find the car often overrides that setting and tends to default to 10 amps. I assume this is some sort of safety mechanism or battery protection setting. I'm quite happy with that, as overnight I can get 7 hours minimum at a cheaper rate, so it can add 35 miles each night. Many people commute less than that. So if I can drive less than that, the battery will always be full the next morning. Well, it works. It's reliable, consistent, came free with the car. So if ever I need a three pin portable charger, uh, which I carry with me all times, like when I visit family uh, who don't have an EV wall charger, that's what I use. So when the EV dance portable charger arrived, it was an ideal opportunity to put it head to head with the Tesla. So the first thing I noticed, the cable's so much thinner, the unit's so much lighter, and the display is really useful. But I immediately ran into a serious problem. I had nothing whatsoever to do with the chargers. I set the test up at about five o'clock and took countless photos and I video everything that was going on. Both chargers defaulted to just one mile an hour before cutting out altogether. Well, of course, obviously, because both did it, was obviously the car. And watching the readings, I quickly discovered that the voltage was all over the place. Well, this was peak time when everybody gets home and plugs everything in. And the grid balances these fluctuations by allowing the voltage to vary. Now, with when I was watching, at times it dropped way below 220 volts. So I'm assuming that the car has a lower limit and below that just kicks the charger off, ends the session. And that applied for both the Tesla and the EV dance. I just waited an hour. Plugged it in again, voltage was much higher and much more stable. Everything worked perfectly with both chargers. Well, with the EV Dance at 6 amps, I got around 3 miles an hour. 8 amps, it was 5. 
10 amps it was 6 and at 13 amps it hit 8 miles per hour. And the Jaji kept the 13 amp setting for a period of over two hours while I tested this and another reading I'll come to in a minute. It was totally stable, stable, gave a very comprehensive readout as to what it was doing. Now at this point I normally get a flood of complaints, comments telling me not to charge at 13 amp as it will overheat the circuit, possibly set fire to the house. Do you see now why I test these things for myself? And in this case, make sure I use the newest certified circuit. So before I, re I reveal the results, I thought I'd do a little bit of checking, common sense checking, to see if this fear held any reality. Now my kettle is rated between 2.5 and 3 kilowatts. That works perfectly. The fear mongers claim, well, it might be able to handle 13 amps for a short time, but never plug your EV in for a long period. Well, I looked at the uh, kitchen circuit, found all the sockets were on the same circuit, checked the appliances, and I found my air fryer is uh, definitely not momentary. It has a power rating of 2.57 to 3.04 kilowatts, and it plugs into a standard socket, and that often runs for up to an hour quite regularly, often alongside the fan oven. It makes better chips and roasties. But the main fan oven is an electric fan oven with a rating of 2.5 kilowatts and the instructions state this should be plugged in to a standard 13 amp socket. So on roast days, the oven can be on for three or four hours, the air fryer for an hour or so. We often boil the kettle for gravy and microwave certain things to heat them up if necessary. We don't get fires. We have standards and those can cope quite happily with normal day to day tasks. By the way, if ever a circuit or plug got hot, I'd immediately stop using it, contact an electrician. So, what actually happened? Well, I've got a digital thermometer, it's really accurate. So I plugged the charger in, set the car charging at the full 13 amp, and for the first half hour stood over it, well, waiting for it to catch fire. Ah, it didn't. Uh, definitely no fire. In fact, for the first half hour, it barely got warm. Now, as a reference point, just for you, a uh, typical warm shower is around 37 to 39 centigrade. The EV plug never got that warm. It remained at or around ambient. The cable and the portable chargers never got any warmer. Now, the three-pin plug did get a bit warmer after the best part of an hour, but never exceeded 35.1 centigrade. Now, that's a temperature many people would consider too cold to shower in. The plug felt tepid, I love that word, but it was barely lukewarm and never got hot during a more than two hour test. So what's my conclusion? Well, first, if you have any doubts about your electrical supply, do not plug your 30, 40, 50,000 pound EV into it. If your circuit has not recently been tested or not ever, get it tested before you use it. I do regularly and a full certification is about 120 pound. Is this a waste of money? Absolutely not. Dealing with health here, I have a saying, insurance is a total complete waste of money until you need it. On a recent inspection, one of our bedroom sockets was giving a slightly low or high reading, can't remember which, but it wasn't normal. An electrician told me that just plugging in and unplugging um, a, a socket and running appliances causes mechanical and thermal stress over time. If I regularly charge the EV from the same socket, subjecting it to loads that are above normal for extended periods of time, I would definitely get a more regular inspection. And if it's just for the one circuit, you're unlikely to pay, well, um, any more than £100. Just think, if the electrical circuit's never deteriorated, you'd never ever need to get a re rewire, would you? Get it checked. Well, second, the portable three-pin chargers are great. There are plenty about, so what should you look for? When the UK, although the charger might advertise 16 amps or higher, you won't be able to get that if you use a three pin plug. Portable chargers are generally capped at 13 amps, but most are also fully adjustable, six, eight, 10, up to 13. Look also for the safety standards label. We're in a bit of a transition at the moment with Brexit. Uh, the old CE brand is no longer really valid and we're now moving over to our own UKCA. Many products will still be CE certified, and that is a measure of the quality. We also have a British standard. We also have uh, something called IEC 62196-2, uh, which 
uh, apply specifically to EV charging sockets and plugs. Just check it and make sure it's compliant. Well, bearing in mind that electrical circuits do deteriorate over time with mechanical and thermal stress, I would use it at the lowest settings you're comfortable with. While most of us will use an existing socket, there are specific EV sockets that are better able to handle the extra load, temperature and duration, and some even have a padlock fastening it so that your car will charge and the cable will still be there in the morning. So finally, less essential, try to avoid charging at rush hour, as I discovered, between 5pm and 6pm. On my test, the voltage dropped well below a minimum level at which the car was happy. Several times just ended the session. And now, just a real final thought. Some people like me get a limited period of off-peak electricity. Uh, I pay 7p for mine. And for some, that does not give them enough time, uh, because these are time-restricted, to get enough of a charge. Just remember that my peak rate is only 23p. And that is cheaper than most public EV chargers out there by a long way. So if your EV needs more charge than your five, six or seven hours cheap overnight rate, just leave it plugged in for as long as necessary and just pay that higher price. Well, I never recommend any products that I test as what works for me might not work for someone else, but the EV Dance, it's the ACS1301B, um, they really do need a catchier name than that. Uh, it worked very well for me. I was very, uh, very well impressed with it. And I would be more than happy to use it. It's easy to use, offers quite a bit more speed than the Tesla charger. Well, petrol heads never get to experience the sheer simplicity and cheap price of charging at home. No more trips to the petrol station ever. You just wake up every morning with a full battery. Go on, try it. You won't go back. I'm Dave.